Hello, I'm television meteorologist Mike Fairborn. You know, I'm not always 100% sure what the weather's going to be, but there's one thing I can predict with confidence, potholes, and that means plenty of work for our street and road maintenance crews. Since our cities, counties, and the state of Minnesota put millions of dollars into pothole patching every year, it's a good idea to look carefully at the process of pothole patching. And that's exactly what two research teams have done. One of these is the Smooth Pavement Task Force, organized by the Minnesota Department of Transportation, which draws on many years of research conducted by the Minnesota Local Road Research Board. The other team is composed of scientists and engineers working on a national level as part of the Federal Highway Administration's Strategic Highway Research Program. In these projects, a combined total of more than 1,000 potholes were repaired and then monitored to determine which repair methods work best. These are two of their reports. They agree that patches can last longer and save us all a lot of money if better materials and methods are used. I'd like to show you what the studies have found, but first, let's quickly look at a common cause of potholes. Here's a cross-section of a typical pavement. The weight of each vehicle bends the pavement slightly. Small cracks form, first on the bottom of the asphalt because that gets stretched the most. As the asphalt is fatigued, cracks also form on the top surface. Now, water on the pavement from rain or melted snow gets into the cracks. When the temperature drops, the water freezes and expands, making the cracks deeper and wider. With more precipitation, more freeze-thaw cycles, and the continued vehicle loading, sooner or later the cracks go all the way through the pavement. Now water can get underneath the surface. When this subsurface water freezes and expands, it pushes the pavement up and weakens it even more. When the ice melts and contracts, it leaves a space, so we have a weakened pavement layer over a cavity. All that's needed now is a good-sized vehicle and there's your pothole. Since traffic is a contributing factor to the process, it's no surprise to see a string of potholes right along the path where most vehicles drive. That's an example of how potholes form. Now, let's look at ways to repair them effectively. The first thing to consider in any pothole repair operation is safety. A safe patching operation is one that follows MnDOT's guidelines on temporary traffic control. There are specific layouts for short-term and mobile traffic control, which we'll see as we consider the three basic approaches to pothole repair, permanent, semi-permanent, and temporary. First, here's a crew getting ready for permanent patching. They're setting up short-term stationary traffic control according to the MnDOT guide. Permanent patching is the right technique for a pavement that's in good condition, has relatively long life expectancy, and when the local agency's overall resource picture allows the expense of permanent patching. As you'd guess, the studies found that a key factor in successful patching is doing the job right. So let's take a look at the practices that have been proven effective. The first step is to mark the area to be repaired. Choose a simple shape with straight edges, usually a rectangle. Be sure to mark an area big enough so that the patch will be in contact with solid pavement all the way around. If there are cracks around the pothole, include them in the area to be repaired. Then cut out the marked area with a jackhammer, saw, or milling machine, making sure all edges are vertical. It's important also to clean the hole thoroughly so that the patching material has solid surfaces to bond with. Then tack the edges of the hole by mopping, pouring, spraying, or brushing. Both the Minnesota and federal studies strongly recommended using high quality patching material. The hot mix we see here is one of many types that have been shown to perform well in permanent patches. Both studies also found that low-priced material ends up costing more in the long run. The Federal Highway Report says the cost of patching the same potholes over and over due to the use of poor quality patching mix quickly offsets the savings from purchasing the less expensive material. 
If you are using hot mix, it's essential to compact the material before it gets down to 200 degrees Fahrenheit. Below that temperature, the material becomes too stiff for effective compaction. The next step is to place the material in the hole. Throwing patching material into a pothole is a common practice, but it's not the right way to do the job. Throwing segregates the materials. In other words, the large and small aggregate gets separated, and that leads to premature failure of the patch. Holes deeper than six inches should be filled and compacted in more than one lift. In warm weather, make each lift about three inches thick. In cold weather, you can increase the thickness of the lifts so the material holds its heat, which allows for better compaction, which is the last and probably the most single important step in patching. Be sure to choose a compactor that fits the size of the patch. Patching material will usually compact about one quarter inch for each inch of its thickness. When you're done, the material should be about one eighth inch above the surrounding pavement. Traffic will provide a small amount of additional compaction. If you place and compact the material carefully, there's a much greater chance that the patch will remain flush with the surrounding pavement. What we don't want is either a hump or a depression that jolts each vehicle as it comes over the patch. As I said before, permanent patching is the technique to use for a pavement that's in good condition, has a relatively long life expectancy, and when permanent patching fits into the agency's overall picture of available resources. And those three factors, pavement condition, pavement life expectancy, and the overall availability of resources should be weighed carefully in deciding which patching method to use in any given situation. Beyond these guidelines, it's overly simplistic to state precise rules about when and where to use each patching method. Thinking along these same lines, we can say in general that semi-permanent patching, the next method we'll consider, is useful as a proactive measure to keep a small pothole from turning into a major failure. The research reports say material choice is just as important in semi-permanent patching as in permanent patching. And the studies show that a variety of materials can be used to construct high quality semi-permanent patches. The Minnesota report states that the cold mix material called MinDOT 2381 performed as well as several proprietary mixes. Copies of the 2381 specification are available from the MinDOT Bituminous Office. We've already covered guidelines for using hot mix in permanent patching, and those same guidelines apply for semi-permanent patching. All high-quality cold mix materials are self-tacking, including an anti-stripping ingredient, and contain 100% crushed aggregate. The angular shape of the aggregate makes the material more stable because the stones tend to interlock with each other. If you use a proprietary mix, be sure to follow the manufacturer's instructions. If you use a cold mix product, it's very important not to heat it above 100 degrees. That would bake off the additives and reduce the life of the material. For semi-permanent patching, just as with permanent patching, be sure to set up traffic control according to the MnDOT Temporary Traffic Control Manual. The procedure for semi-permanent patching is similar to permanent patching. The major difference is that you don't cut the pavement. So you start with cleaning. Then tack if you're using hot mix, but not if you're using high quality cold mix since it's self-tacking. Then place the material in the hole. And finally, compact the material. As with a permanent patch, if you do these tasks carefully, a semi-permanent patch is likely to last a long time. That brings us to the third technique, temporary patching. It's the right choice in a situation like this. You've got a hole that could damage vehicles, so you need to put a patch in right away. But it's not realistic to close the road. You also might choose temporary patching for a road that's in generally poor condition or one that's scheduled soon for an overlay or reconstruction. Just as with the other two methods, consult the MnDOT Temporary Traffic Control Manual for guidelines on setting up safe, appropriate traffic control. We can't expect a temporary patch to last as long as a permanent or semi-permanent patch, but we certainly do want temporary patches to last as long as possible. Again, materials and methods make a difference. For temporary patching, cold mix is the right material. 
And the message here is the same as before. The most cost-effective repairs are made with high-quality material. The research reports emphasize that some simple changes in the temporary patching process can produce higher quality, longer-lasting patches. First, just as with permanent and semi-permanent patching, it's very important to clean loose material and water out of the hole before patching, so the patch will have a solid surface to bond to. Second, the well-known throw-and-go technique should be discontinued and replaced with a place-and-roll method. In other words, place the material in the hole instead of throwing it in, and be sure the material is in the hole, not around the hole. Again, compaction was found to be very important. The researchers state that for temporary patches, good results can be achieved by driving over the patch several times, or for better results, compact more carefully with a tamper or vibratory compactor. In addition to its evaluation of permanent, semi-permanent, and temporary patching, the Federal Highway Report looked at spray injection and determined that it's one of the most cost-effective pothole patching methods available, even with the high initial equipment cost. We've looked at a lot of worthwhile information here, so let's review what we've seen. There are three basic pothole patching methods. Permanent patching, which is appropriate if the pavement is in good condition, has a long life expectancy, and when the agency's budget allows the expense of permanent patching. Semi-permanent, which can be seen as a proactive, preventive measure. And temporary patching, which should be used when you need a quick patch for a dangerous hole but can't divert traffic or for a road in poor condition. Both research groups emphasized the same three proven practices. First, use high quality patching material because they're cost effective compared to less expensive materials. Lower priced materials end up costing more because they don't last. Second, compaction is essential for every patch, even if it's just driving over a temporary patch with a truck. And third, the old throw and go method for temporary patching should be replaced by a place and roll method. With the benefit of these studies, public agencies all over Minnesota can save time, work, and the public's tax dollars every time they patch a pothole.